When does a crossover make sense? Is it within the fun of putting two properties together or does the heart of it lie within the reasonings for the crossover happening and or how effective it is? Crossovers in cartoons are not a new concept. In fact, we've grown to be more accustomed to it more and more over the years. With channels like Cartoon Network treating all of their shows as intermingling in some way, shape, or form. From one-off cameos to full-blown crossover events, if you watched any show over the past couple decades on Cartoon Network, you were bound to see other cartoons popping into the cartoon you are currently watching. As I'm sure we will cover those eventually here on the channel, today let's take a look at Nickelodeon, where these crossovers were a little less frequent. Cousin Skeeter meeting Kenan and Kel, the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour trilogy, all of the live action shows from the mid-2000s to the mid-2010s crossing over at some point. But if you notice there, there really weren't many cartoons mentioned. While there are a few more examples for sure, there is one today that I find perfect in showcasing a great crossover. Klasky Supo owned the majority of animations on Nickelodeon in the 90s and early 2000s. That's why so many characters looked like this, and this, and this, and even this. Oh, sorry, that's an embarrassing photo of me from the Too Many Games convention party. What are you doing? As a fan of a lot of their shows, two specific 90s shows that seemed highly unlikely to meet met. Now, when it comes to the Rugrats, we have discussed a lot of the old and new here on the channel, but as far as talking about all real monsters, we just haven't ventured there quite yet. And what better time to do so than with the one time these two shows met during an episode of the Rugrats that was released on the Halloween VHS, even though it premiered in March. The original Spooky Month. And now I've brought up this specific episode we are talking about today in a previous Rugrats video, but I figured for the spirit of the undisputed best holiday, don't at me, we would take a look at the time these two shows, Rugrats and All Real Monsters, met up. What is this? A crossover episode? So, like I was saying, Rugrats, not a stranger here. We've talked a lot about it and still will going forward. But we haven't tapped into All Real Monsters yet, a show that follows three Monster Academy students in training to scare humans. Is this where Monsters, Inc. got its idea from? Hmm, pretty shady there, Disney. The three main characters from the show are Ickis, Crumb, and Ablina, who is pretty OP in Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Oh! Jordan's out here juggling me, dude. He's chasing me across the map. Do you see this? Okay, there we go. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I swear to God! Oh my God! Ah! I'm gonna kill you now. Okay, no I'm not. Oh, okay. Now, I might do a full video on All Real Monsters soon, so if you'd like to see that, let me know. Anyway, the episode of the Rugrats we were talking about is titled Ghost Story. And one night, Tommy, Chucky, Phil, Lil, and even Dill are all over at Angelica's house for a sleepover. As a thunderstorm rages outside, the group pretend to have a camp out inside of her room. So naturally, they begin taking turns telling a scary story. Of course, Chucky is reluctant to be a part of it. Set up in a popcorn style where each of them would add on to the same story, taking place in a spooky house with only a single light shining from the attic, each of them would play a role within the story, with our main vessel being Chucky as he meets Phil and Lil, who are labeled as the creepiest people. They have that classic haunted house butler and maid look, a little bit of the Addams Family inspiration in there. I mean, just look at that mustache. And shortly after, we meet Tommy, who represents a friendly ghost, essentially Casper, as well as Angelica, who plays a witch. And their main adventure here is to go through the house and get to the attic to see what the light is. But of course, Angelica isn't liking how everyone else is adding their own bits to the story, making it less and less scary. So as the antagonist of the story continues to get in their way. Coming up, it's ah, real monsters, followed by Rugrats, only on Nick. When searching through different rooms of the house, out of nowhere, Chucky opens a door to find the Ah Real Monsters sitting around watching this exact episode of the Rugrats. Literally. Chucky's surprised expression is shown on the TV in real time as he is reacting to seeing Ickis, Crumb, and Ablina. All the other doors are opened and looked into, and other monsters appear to inhabit the rooms as well. As Angelica is encouraging them to then go and eat the babies. And when all the monsters finally have them all cornered, Tommy pleads that instead of eating them, there is 
is chocolate pudding in the fridge and it tastes way better. Ickis calls the bluff and licks Chucky's face and exclaims, Definitely pudding! So they all head downstairs and leave the babies alone. Now finding a key and making their way to the attic, the adventure is complete. But Angelica is still mad they made it through without being stopped by her monster friends. So as she is complaining, the monsters return to scare Angelica one more time before the story concludes and the episode ends. This isn't a long tale being told, but what it offers is a fun, memorable moment for the Rugrats franchise. Our Real Monsters ran for four seasons on Nickelodeon, ending its series run in December of 1997. So aside from reruns, the Our Real Monsters weren't premiering any new episodes, and this was their first appearance again being in this episode of the Rugrats. Which aside from crossing over with the Wild Thornberries and the Rugrats Go Wild movie and the time during the Rugrats comic adventures when the Rocket Power crew, all but Sam, RIP my boy, go and babysit Tommy and Angelica. This would be the only other time the Rugrats would cross over with any other property. So crossovers for the Rugrats weren't a regular thing by any means, but when they did, they kept it in the Klasky Supo universe, which is cool. Now with the Ah Real Monsters being the one series out of the crossovers to break away from the grounded in reality stories of their other properties, tying them into a scary story that the group was creating was surely a neat way to incorporate them in. A point that makes sense is this crossover making sense. It's easy to put two things together for the fun of it, but doing it in one of two ways, either a reason for the crossover to happen or fitting it in naturally, makes something like this not only memorable, but also highly appreciated by the fans of the properties. I think this point will make more sense an example with some collabs I have coming up for the channel fitting both of those categories, but regardless, I appreciate that it was something not for random sake, but rather a nice call out to all real monsters and using them as well monsters. Overall, a nice surprise if you were a fan of the All Real Monsters, seeing them come out of nowhere for a fit cameo in the show and getting another performance from said characters, albeit a brief one. But oh man, is there not a moment that I forget about this crossover? While not a super scary episode of the Rugrats, it just feels right watching this during the Halloween season along with the other episodes on those iconic orange tapes. Ah, <sighs> the good old days. Sorry, I'm getting old. Let me have these fond memories, okay? A trope I really like is when characters are telling a story and within the story, they break the fourth wall knowing that they are within said story or whatever narrative device is being used. It breaks the tension as well as things appearing as the story is being narrated has this warm, imaginative feeling that nicely brings you further into the narrative. Now, speaking about this today is not just for the fascination of this cool crossover, but mainly to share in my joy of this episode from my childhood with you. As I get older, the meaning of time feels different, and I tend to look back at certain moments from my childhood that still have residence in my brain. So making the content I do now on YouTube is not only something I hope you find interesting, or just share in the experience collectively, but for me to truly relive these moments, these memories and these feelings that I hold dear. I wish we got to see more interesting and well-used crossovers like this with more Nicktoons. There for sure was some room for an As Told by Ginger and Rugrats crossover, I'm sure, something along those lines. Maybe Ginger being an actual like tutor to Angelica or Susie, but I digress. So yeah, that was the time the All Real Monsters invaded an episode of the Rugrats. Kind of a fun thing to witness growing up in the 90s seeing crossovers of two different cartoons you're a fan of happen? Not a weird concept today with how many TV and cinematic universes there are though. The DCAU was another one in the 90s that I did take notice of as well as mentioned in my Static Shock video. We will cover more crossover moments like this in the near future like the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour TV movie so if you'd like to see that make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you soon with another video but until then, later.